You know, sometimes the biggest roadblocks to happiness and getting what you want in life are toxic people around you. We've all met these bad guys and bad gals at one point or another, but now they're going to have to deal with Dr. Phil McGraw. His new book is the best-selling Life Code, The New Rules for Winning in the Real World. And he joins us now. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Oh, glad to be here. You, you find a time to do a lot of different things. How long did it take yeah. you to write a book like this? Well, you know, I actually was working on it for a long time, uh, but I didn't plan to actually write the book. I, I just um, was actually kind of doing a little self-reflection and kind of an inventory on my own life about, frankly, people in my life that had wound up betraying me, attacking me, or in some way trying to exploit me. And so I started kind of writing about, you know, who are these people? Just writing for myself. And I started seeing some patterns. And it turns out that these type people that I call baiters, yeah. which is, is just a term uh, that stands for backstabbers, abusers, imposters. I mean, you just go right on down the line. Um, uh, to takers, exploiters, and reckless, because they're reckless with your life. You just go right on down the line, and you find out that there are characteristics, traits, and profiles that characterize these people. As you're talking, I'm sure a lot of people are experiencing this, you're immediately thinking of people like oh, this yeah. in your own life. The, the, the goal, I imagine, is to get rid of those people in your life, which is probably easier <clears throat> said than done. It is easier said than done, but, you know, one of the things that we have to learn to do, and, I, you know, I... I tell you, the reason I decided to go ahead and write this book is because I think the world has changed. When the game changes, you need a new rule book, and that's what Life Code is. It's the rules for winning in the real world. And that means you've got to challenge some of the things you may have been taught. I was always taught, give people the benefit of the doubt. Right. It's the Christian thing to do. It's, mm. the, it's the right thing to do. It's sure. a good thing to do. Um, give people the benefit of the doubt. I think that is crazy. I think it is insane. Why would we give somebody the benefit of the doubt? That's no less wrong than judging them right, without right. information. Why not? That's Let's true. not do either. Let's just gather data and make data-based decisions about people in our life. If, let's say you've come to this conclusion and you've figured out who the person is. What, how do you cut them off, so to speak? Step one is trust your gut. I mean, trust your gut. Because how many times, I'll bet you, you can, you, you can go back and make a list, Sanjay, of the people in your life that you just had a funny feeling yeah, about right. you weren't sure, sure. Yeah. and so you say hey you know don't be judgmental just you know get over it kind of go with it. you got to listen to your gut we don't tend to lie to ourselves about things like that and if you've got an uneasy feeling about somebody listen to it That's great and advice, when you yeah. listen to it then you put them on a watch list maybe you don't take them out of your life yet but you put them on a watch list you pay attention to see if they possess the evil eight, if they're using any of what I call the nefarious 15, the ways that they exploit you. You learn those things, you watch for them, and you go, wow, this person is infiltrating into my life. This person is trying to get me into a compromising, conspiratorial disclosure about our boss or about a friend. Look, if they'll gossip with you, they'll gossip about you. So, I mean, if you see people doing that, listen to your gut, and if and those things begin to trigger, say, you know what? I'm putting up a wall here. I, you don't have to let people know what you're thinking, but you start backing away. You, you stop exposing yourself to that person. If you do decide that, you know, they need to be cut <clears> out, <throat> there's an old adage that a tiger doesn't lose its stripes. I mean, can the person eventually in the future, six months, a year from now, do you give them a second chance? These people typically don't improve. I'm sorry, but... It, and, and that's, that's not true in every situation, but the prognosis is not good for these people to improve. In fact, if they go to therapy, it's usually court ordered because they would not go on their own, but they go to therapy, a lot of them tend to get worse hmm. because the therapist teaches them the symbol system, it teaches them how to fake it. Because so listen, you need to learn how to say this and that and the other, you need to feel this. They go, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It just makes them better at disguising who they are. So therapy tends to make these people That's worse. Really and, and you get away from them for a while and you go, you know, I, I, I kind of miss that person. Right. Now, you miss who you wish they were. Let's say you see a friend of yours who clearly is in one of those types of relationships with a toxic person. I mean, this is your area of expertise. Should you <clears throat> get in there and say, look, hey, buddy, pay attention to what's going on here? It depends on how strong your relationship is 
typically that doesn't work out for you. The best thing you can do is say to that person, you do what you want, but let me tell you, I have bells going off about this person. I am going to pull back from this person. I am going to protect myself here. You have to make up your own mind. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Then you've put them on alert. You've sounded the bell without them saying, well, you tried to break us up. What, are you jealous of our friendship? What? Not at all. You guys do what you need to do. Right. I'm telling you, for me, I'm taking a step back. So, like, if you want to go to the movies and you want the three of us to go, you two just go ahead. You and I'll catch up later. I always enjoy speaking to you. I feel like I learned something. I'm already <laughs> thinking about some of these people in my life. And, uh, you know, I don't want to come across as a complete pessimist. The entire second half of this book is how to win in your life, right. whether you ever encounter these yeah. people at all. How to play this game of life in a way that pays off for you and those you love. And it's exciting, and there's a lot of tools and information in there. The second half of the book is about all creating policies in your life. The first half is just let's watch for the people that would sabotage you along the way. Yeah, because they'll derail even yeah, your best sure. laid plans. Sure. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. All Thanks right, so good much. Good talking to you, Dr. Man. Phil. Thanks. Thank you so much.